Here we go. Ready? Oh, he's better than me. Yeah. What's up, guys? Well, check it out. I made it. Today's uh, July 31st, I think. Somewhere around that. Yeah, I think it's the 31st. And uh, I get the pigeonhole assembly all completed, except for the door, like I told you, and the, uh, the pilasters. I'm going to do that stuff after I cut the material off to the upper case, and I can take a piece of the uh, primary wood that I need that matches the pigeonhole assembly to go with the pigeonhole assembly. So, the next step, bam, baby, up a case. I'm totally pumped. Steve's working on the drawers, and they're coming out nice, and you can probably see in the back, I have all the uh, drawer bottoms and the sides sticking over there, just acclimating to the, uh, to the room and the moisture and all that stuff. So um, I went into school today, and Steve and I did a little drawing, did a little figuring, and uh, we got the upper case laid out for the most part. You know, the upper case is laid out enough for me to start to build it. It's nowhere near complete, but at least I have a mental picture of what I need to do now. So, check it out. This is, well, this is a Cogswell piece, but what we're going to go for is the look on these, um, these doors, okay? So, you see the pilasters? These ones here, they're pretty wide, and they have a really big honking piece of uh, detail on the bottom. But what I really, really dig about this piece, I'm just going to put it down and zoom in on it, is that I like that tulip kind of detail on the top of it. You see it right here? It's really, really cool. And I think it's significant to a Boston Bombay style because it really, it, oh man, I'm sorry. I, I just suck at freaking using a camera. Well, I wasn't supposed to say freaking anymore. I really stink at using a camera. But anyway. This right here is the detail that I most dig about this Cogswell piece and the carving that goes along the inside of these doors. These panels are replacement panels and they would have probably been um, mirrored. So I'm putting mirrored glass in. <clears throat> a lot of people have been telling me not to, but it really would have been traditional to the piece. So that's what I'm going to do. And there's a carving detail that goes all along the outside of the scalloped uh, edge. The plinth block and this really cool detail. You know, it looks like a big tulip and it, it accentuates the bottom half. And since the Bombay piece is really, you know, derived from the tulip, you know, I thought it would be a kind of a nice detail. And you see all this wood right here? Let's see, back this up. All right. Now, I always tell you guys how important it is to save all this stuff, okay? It's important, right? Because, uh, this wood right here is the same piece of stock that the sides came out of. And this right here is what, uh, is what the sides came out of as well. I thought that the upper case was going to be about 11 and a half, but it's not. It's 12 and a quarter. So 12 and a quarter plus the door plus the detail brings it out to be about 13 and three quarters. So what I need to do with these two boards is I need to cut a piece off the drawers that got rejected. And I need to add a piece, and this is going to be the bottoms. Instead of being the sides of the case, this is now going to be the bottom and the top of the case. So when you open the doors, you're going to see these pieces of wood inside. So it's very important that this stuff matches the rest of it. So I'll put these off to the side, right? These right here are the, are the drawers. <clears throat> Remember these ones that I got rejected because of the way that the grain comes through the side? And it really would have messed up the front of the front of the uh, Bombay drawers. You know, we were shooting for a really nice um, uh, bullseye on the drawer front. And this wood right here wouldn't have given it to us. So, you know, I just scrapped it because I knew I'd be able to cut this and resaw it and book it out and use it for uh, the interior of the doors. I mean, the interior of the case. So, this big ass piece right here, I mean, ugh, it's got a weigh 100 pounds, 150 pounds anyways. So what I need to do with this board, it's, it's the three inch piece, it's the, the rest of the, the bottom case board. I'm going to cut it 13 inches, you know, cut it down, clean it up, and then I have to resaw it to get the two sides of the case. So hopefully tomorrow 
I'm going to prep it as much as I can, but my bandsaw only goes to 12, so i got to go back into school and use that really big bandsaw to clean up this right here. So, in the meantime, I'm going to get to cut this apart. I'm listening to that. And these right here, these are boards that I saved from the big-ass table. And this is really great-looking gnarly wood, you know, but it doesn't match anything else. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to make the sub-bottom of the upper case. Now, this case gets a gets a sub bottom that you don't see because you need to have a space in between for the um, the candle poles, you know what I'm saying? So it's going to get a sub bottom, a little gap, about three eighths of an inch, and then it's going to get the bottom of the case. So when you open the doors, you're going to see that piece on the, on the inside of the uh, upper case. So, it's probably a lot of information. I probably, it's probably boring to all you guys that don't know what's going on. But if you go back in the other podcast, you'll probably be able to uh, catch on to see what's going on. So. What I need to do basically is just make another box like I did with the Bombay, but it ain't going to have curved sides. It's just going to be straight. So this one right here, once I cut all the boards and mill them and get them to three quarter, I'll be able to just hand cut dovetail it, you know, probably remove the material with the router like I did before, and get this upper box together. Hopefully, <clears throat> well, by the end of the week, Saturday or Sunday, I should have this box together with the rabbit to receive the backs, and then I'll work on the dados to stop putting this interior case together. Now this interior case is really beautiful and it really mimics the um, interior case of the Pendleton piece which is amazing to me because uh, Steve and I looked at tons of these interiors and the one that's most representative is actually the one in Pendleton so I was actually impressed by that fact. <clears throat> so let me come back over to the book and I'll show you what the interior is going to look like. You've probably already seen it. All right. Now, this, this pediment, don't even pay attention to it, you know, it's got way too much detail. It almost looks like it's Philadelphia, but it's Boston. Bam! You probably got a glare on that, huh? Hey, that ain't bad. So, this is the interior pigeon, I mean, uh, uppercase um, compartment. It has one, two, three, four drawers along the bottom, and it's got double pigeonholes and one across the top. And I'll just mimic the detail on these ones like I did on the... Um, the interior down here. They're actually bigger obviously. So I'm going to get to doing this and what's really great is that I used, I saved enough material where I'll be able to get all this out of one piece. And then hopefully, you know, these backboards, they have to be primary wood because obviously you can see them when you open the door. So I can basically build a case, build all these drawers and do all this work before I have to start to worry about the doors and the pediment. And I already have a big ass chunk of wood for the pediment and the doors. So um, I have literally probably a good solid month. If I can get this upper case built with the back on it and all the little pigeonhole stuff done, I'll be really, really pumped because then it'll be into September and then uh, I think the doors and the pediment, the feet and the rest of it will probably take me till the end of October depending on how things go. Uh, it's a lot of work and I'm doing this and the podcast and I, I'm just all over the place and I just really need to concentrate here. But I'm starting to feel good about it. And um, just finishing the bottom has really helped me get motivated to get this top done. So um, just keep your fingers crossed that I don't make any major mistakes like I did on this er, this um, other one, you know, the lowercase. Although I really didn't make too many mistakes. Just that one big ass mistake when I uh, made the wrong doubler. But once I got over that, it was pretty clear sailing. 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 Sail. I'm sailing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what about both? A funny movie, isn't it? Um, sailing. Maybe he was all tied to the um, to the mast. But anyways, that's my life right there. All right, it's really hot in here. It's August first. It's probably 115 degrees in here. I don't have the fan on. I got a water slide down my back. So uh, I just want to give you guys a lowdown on what's to come. So keep your fingers crossed and keep watching. And hopefully this thing will uh, come together relatively quickly. All right, peace out.